so here we are. Uh, I'm going to make this video. I'm just going to go over a handful of questions. Um, we're going to start. Uh, we started in class preparing for the New York State math test. Um, this is for grade grade four. Uh, so I should put in here grade four math test. I'm going to put that right in there as I'm uh, talking to you right now. Um, so let's get started. All right. So we take a look here. This question number one says, Kramer writes the equation four times eight equals 32. Which statement could Kramer be representing with this equation? All right. So you look here, we know it's four times eight is 32. So how can we represent four times eight is 32? So that is right there. Okay. Ah, uh, well, A, there are eight times as many small fish as big fish, and there are three big fish. Well, that would be eight times three. Nope, this problem is not eight times three, so I could cross that out right away. I go to B. There are eight times as many as four pages in this magazine. How many pages are there? Well, I, I do see the eight times, it looks like eight times four, and I know in my problem it says four times eight, but eight times as eight times as many as four would have to be eight times four. So that doesn't match up as well. And C, there are four times as many forks as there are spoons, and there are seven spoons. That would be four times seven, which leaves me with D. There are four times as many butterflies at the zoo as there are lizards. There are eight lizards. How many creatures in total? That matches the four times eight. Four times as many butterflies at the zoo as there are lizards. Okay. Now we go to number two. After 30 minutes, a rotating spotlight has made a third, a third turn. What is the measurement of the angle of rotation in degrees? Well, when we're talking, when we're making uh, turns, right, and we're making uh, going a third of the way around, here, this is where I'm drawing, I'm drawing a circle, right? We know all the way around the circle is going to be 360 degrees is going to go all the way around the circle, all right? That's a 360 degree turn. So if we're making here a one-third turn, it means I'm going a third of the way. When you're going a third of the way, you're chopping that up into three parts, right? So I am going to do 360 degrees divided by three. If I could do that, three goes into one, three goes into three one time, three goes into six two times, and three goes into zero, zero times. That I did right there is some short division. So that's 120 degrees. Because 120 degrees, another 120 is 240, and another 120 is 360. That would be your, your one-third turns. Okay? So it's 120 degrees. Oh, sorry. It's a little small. 120 degrees. Okay. Um, number three. Which circle, which circle's shaded fraction is equivalent to the shaded fraction from above? So I'm going to clear, I'm clearing my board that I have here. I'm going to clear everything. I'm going to see, this should let me, oh, yep. Going to make it a little bit bigger. Not sure if you see that. Actually, I got to do it the other way around. I'm going to move this and make it bigger for you to see. There we go. So look at the circle below. Which circle's shaded figure is equivalent to the shaded figure above? Well, uh, I'm taking a look and going to say, well, this is... There's three pieces total. This is two-thirds shaded. Okay, so two-thirds. So A, B, C, or D, which is equivalent to two-thirds? 
Well, A is one half shaded. B is four out of six. I counted four shaded pieces and there are six altogether. C is one fourth and D is one out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So two thirds is equivalent to which one of those fractions? Well, you could do this one of two ways. You could do this by comparing two thirds to each of those fractions, or you could t actually take a look at the amount shaded and see it matches up to, to what? Well, two thirds, that is way more shaded than C, one fourth. It's way more shaded than D, one sixth. And if you're looking at A, that's half, right? I don't have half shaded, so I know it's not A. And you could see how the piece that's missing over here looks like the piece that's missing right here. So how can I compare them just to double check? Two thirds compared to four sixths. We are going to do this in school when we're comparing. When we compare, we cross multiply. So I always start at the bottom, our denominator, and shoot my rocket ship off on a diagonal. Six times two is 12. Now I go to the other denominator, which is down here at three, shoot on a diagonal to the sky, three times four is 12. We have 12 above both fractions, so we know that is equivalent, okay? So that would be number three. Now I go over here, number four. What is the value of 189 divided by four? Well, this is straight up division. So I am going to do 189, divide that by four. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and repeat. All right, I'm gonna bring down, and repeat. Four can't go into one, so I put a zero. Can four go into 18? It can. How many times without going over? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. No, five is too much. So four times. Four times four is 16. Now I'm going to subtract. 18 minus 16 is two. Bring down. Nine and repeat. Four goes into 29. How many times without going over? Four times seven is 28. Four times eight is 32, which is too much. So it's four times seven is 28. Let me subtract and you get one. It's 47 remainder one. That is there. That is B. It's a straightforward division problem. Number five. Which statement is true about a right triangle? This we mentioned in class. What do we know about a right triangle? A right triangle. A right triangle must have a right angle. Otherwise, it's not a right triangle. Your answer is D. One angle must be a right angle. A, B, and C, they're all wrong. Two sides must have the same length. That's an isosceles triangle. B, three sides must have the same length. That's a equilateral triangle. Two sides must be equal to three inches. That's just another way of saying two sides are the same, which is isosceles. So your answer is D. A right triangle must have a right angle. Number six. What is the value of 1,493 times 4? 1,493 times 4. This is straight up computation, okay? I can eliminate before I begin. Look at A, 1,497. That's if you add. That's if you're adding 4. So I don't even have to compute. I know A is wrong. 
Now, 1,493. Even if I rounded that up, which would be wrong, to 2,000, right? 2,000 times 4 is 8,000. Look at D. 8,004 can't even be D because that's nowhere even close when I do my estimation. So it's either B or C. Let's take a look. 4 times 3 is 12. Now, four times three, uh, four times nine is 36, plus one is 37. Right there is enough to tell you that your answer is C, but we'll keep going. Four times four is 16. Oh, wait, I lost my place. Four times three is 12. Good, four, four times nine is 36, plus one is 37. Four times four is 16, plus three is 19, and four times one is four plus one is five, 5,972. Good. And look at seven. Uh, Alexi or Alexi walks five eighths of a mile to school. Amy walks three eighths of a mile to school. How much farther than Amy does Alexi walk? How much farther than Amy? Well, father, father, that is subtract. You're finding the difference between the two. And 5 eighths minus 3 eighths equals 2 eighths, which is B. That key word, how much farther. It's actually that key phrase lets you know you're comparing the two amounts. You're finding the difference which means you're subtracting. Awesome. Okay, let's go to the last uh, two questions here. Number eight, Kelly's age is a multiple of three and six. Wh which could be Kelly's age? Well, if Kelly's age is a multiple of three and six, let me list the multiples of three and six and see what age could it be. Well, three I count by threes, you get six. So a multiple of three and six is six, but six isn't one of your choices. So I'm going to keep going. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. I'll stop for now. Six, six, 12. Oh, found it. 12 and 12. 12 is a multiple of three and six. So that is your answer. That is your multiples. Okay, and the last one here, Diana drew this angle, uh, this angle diagram. Right here. The shaded angle she measured was 62 degrees. The unshaded shaded angle is 66 degrees. What is the measure of the whole angle? The whole angle we don't have, but to get that, you're gonna do the 62 degrees plus the 66 degrees, which will make up the whole angle. Two plus six is eight. Six plus six is 12. 128 degrees is C. Now, that is the first nine questions. Uh, these we went over in class. Um, this is, these are exactly the type of questions that you will see on the state test. So when it comes time to reviewing, it's Review these questions, look them over. Ask yourself, do you really know how to solve them? Because I'm telling you, year after year, they don't change the questions that much, they change the numbers. So if you can do these, you'll be able to do any that looks similar to it, okay? Until next time.